Hi, I'm Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at the Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to be doing a database tour of a Gale Business Database. The way you get to the library homepage from the college is to mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or click on Student Support, scroll down to Academics, and find us there. From the library, you have a number of different ways you can begin your search, but we want to look specifically for a business database. Before we leave this page, I'm going to highlight Ask a Librarian. We have research assistance available via chat 24-7. If you contact us during the time that we're closed, like on a Sunday, for example, you will talk to a librarian who is a part of our consortium, so they're still a college or university librarian. But if you contact us during our open hours, you'll be talking to an SMC librarian. And if the librarian outside of SMC cannot answer your question, they will let us know and we will email you back and help you. So heading into the databases, you have a number of different ways again that you can approach this. We have a listing of all of our databases alphabetically by title with a short description of what's each in each one. We also have database types, so if you're looking just for ebooks or just for newspapers or just for journal articles, you can go there. Keep in mind that most of our databases have a combination of various formats of information, so you will find it perhaps more useful to go into all subjects. And in this case, I'm going to look for business databases, so I head into business, and it highlights some of our most useful or popular databases at the top and then it goes into an academic listing. So I can either pick one of these or I can scroll down and I can look through the descriptions of the database until I find one that I like. And in this case, we're going to try Business Gale One File. This database allows you to search a variety of ways. You can visualize connections between various search terms. You can look into a subject guide, which is a list of subject terms assigned to articles within the database. So it tells you how the database thinks of your article and using the tools within the database makes it easier for you to get more specific and relevant results. If you have a specific journal or trade publication that you wish to search for, you can check and see if this database has it. But most students come in with an idea of their topic. So let's just do a general search on logistics. When I do that search, I come up with many, many, many articles in peer-reviewed journals, in magazines for the general public and trade publications, in books, in news articles, in images, and in videos. So I need to revise my search or filter it to make it more specific to what I need. So I can look in publication date. Perhaps what I'm really interested in is green logistics or sustainable logistics. So I can look for subjects and say, is that in here somewhere? Hmm, sustainable development, maybe close, but not quite. So I can keep looking and see if I find anything. Supply chain management, again, close. Maybe that's what I can use. So I can pick a subject heading and I can search here for sustainable and notice that 294 of these are in sustainable development. So I can filter my search with an assigned subject and that allows me to be more specific and relevant. Because this is a current topic and there is current research being done on it, I might want to limit my publication date and say perhaps I want to look at the last three to five years. So I could look at 2019 to now. And apply that filter. And that cuts me down considerably. Now when I take a look at my results, that's something I can handle, although the news is a little unwieldy. And perhaps my instructor has said you must use peer-reviewed journal articles. I don't necessarily want to look at all of these, so I can go directly into academic journals, but here's where you hit a hidden obstacle. Not all academic journals, oddly enough, are peer-reviewed. So you can, once again, filter your results and say give me only peer-reviewed journals. And that takes me from 114 to 92. So I always recommend if it gives you that option, take it. 
You can also search within your results for a specific term. So I might say green. Does that help? And I submit that and it will search through my 92 articles and take it down to 68. And now I have 68 peer-reviewed journal articles within the last five years on my topic that give me the entire article and include green or sustainable information. So at this point I can take a look through it and see if I find something interesting. Oh, this might be quite useful. This is in the Transportation Journal. It is a peer-reviewed journal article. It's from winter of 2020. So when I click on that, it gives me information about the article. It gives me an abstract. An abstract is different from an annotation. An abstract is supplied by the author or the database editors and tells the reader what they consider to be important about this article to anyone doing research on this topic. An annotation is something that you would do in an annotated work cited or um, an annotated list of resources. And this tells what the reader, what the person, the student writing the essay, considered to be important about that article for their research. So it's a different approach. And an abstract can help you determine whether this is something that you want to use in your research or not. What I recommend when you're doing your research is don't read everything when you come to it. Instead, read the abstract. If it looks good, save it or mail it to yourself and find more articles. Keep going until you gather a good bunch of articles and then take a rest and then approach all of your articles to read and evaluate them because the way your brain works when you're searching is different than the way it does when it's evaluating and you want to be able to be effective and um, do your research in such a way that allows you to really absorb the information to help you understand your topic. And understanding your topic makes it easy to write your essay or your presentation. So I take a look through it and this tells me some keywords or um, other search terms that this database considers to be important to this article. And then we read through it and we say, oh, this looks pretty interesting. My search terms are highlighted so I know what this is about. It talks about various things applicable to my topic. And I go, as you notice, it's quite extensive. At the bottom, it gives me their resources that they used, and it helps you with your citation. Make sure that you fix your citation when you put it in your paper, because sometimes the robot doesn't quite get it right, so follow the example that your instructor gives you. So if I decide I like this article, I can save it to my Google Drive, to my OneDrive, I can email it to myself or download it, I can print it out. I can also explore further by taking a look at other articles and related subjects. And a quick note about this window. More like this, or looking at related articles, is specific. You're going from one specific article to another specific article. But say instead of 60 some odd articles, I only got three. That's too narrow. That's not enough information. And maybe I don't know other words to describe my topic. So related subjects are subject headings used by this database that are attached to this article. So if this article is applicable to your topic, these subjects are applicable to your search. And if you click one of these, it will research this entire database using these subject terms and any articles that it finds with these subject terms attached to it, it will retrieve for you. So this is a good way to expand your search. This is a good way to find other articles that are related to the one that you already found. There are also some accessibility buttons here so you can listen to this article. You can change the way it's displayed or the font size or translate it to a different language if necessary. Okay. So if I decide I like this, I can send it to myself. So I'm going to go ahead and email it. I'm going to change my subject line so I know what it is when I look at it in my email. Don't send it as full text. This is a little confusing because this is actually just typing it out. I want the PDF because as you noticed when we went through this, there are graphics and I want to keep those graphics. So I send that off and then I look for more articles. I go back here to results and I take a look at what I have. 
I might change some of my filters. I might go back and look at news reports. I might look at other databases in order to get the broadest understanding of my topic. So if you have any questions as you're using this database, you can always ask a librarian or for any other research at any time. Good luck with your research.